Hello and welcome back to the Operation Swiss Search One course, which is now kind of uh, we're at the end of the semester. So one of the last topics in this semester is about simplex algorithm again, but here we are going to talk about revised simplex algorithm. So let's see what kind of revision that uh, we can make to the simplex algorithm such that um, the algorithm becomes more efficient, especially if you um, design a software or something uh, in the computer to run this algorithm. So let's start. First of all, let us recall the formulas that we used in the topic of sensitivity analysis to construct the optimal table. But actually, these formulas may be used to construct any table if we know the set of the basic variables of that simplex table. Okay, so not only the optimal table, but every step in the simplex iteration, we may construct the simplex table using these formulas. So if you recall, um, these are all the formulas that we need to construct the table, both for the row zero and the rows in the constraints. And then based on these observations, we can say that what we need to know to construct any simplex table is that we no need to know the set of basic variables because we need to calculate the CBV, CBV, and then we also need uh, this knowledge to find out about the B inverse so the basic variable information tells us about CBV and B inverse. And then we also need to know the parameters in the original problem because we need uh, uh, the notation AJ, CJ, and a small b. So in other words, uh, you may see that to construct any simplex table, we only need to know the basic variables and uh, the parameters in the original problem which means that um, from one iteration in the simplex algorithm to the next iteration, we do not need to calculate the entire table, right? Uh, previously, when we learned simplex algorithm from one iteration to the next, we always calculate the entire table. Now, using this knowledge, we know that we only need to know the basic variables such that each time we uh, calculate the CBV, B inverse, and then pretty much that's all we need to know. And then from one iteration to the next, we keep doing this. So the key here is that we only need to know the basic variables, the parameters in the original problem, and then such that we do not need to calculate the entire simplex table. So that's the key for the revised simplex algorithm. Again, let's use this example that uh, you've been very familiar with. It's about Dakota problem again. So in the Dakota problem, uh, when we convert the problem into standard form, um, in the very first iteration, or let's say iteration zero, the basic variables are S1, S2, and S3. Okay, so those are the basic variables. And then from uh, the basic variables, we may calculate the B. So based on the basic variables with the same order, S1 for the first constraint, S2 for the second, S3 for the third, we may uh, see that B contains the column of the basic variables. So 100, zero, zero, and then 010, zero, zero, and then 001. Zero, zero, so that is B. And then we have the subscript 0 because it denotes that this is the B for iteration 0. Similarly, BV0 uh, means that these are the basic variables for iteration 0. And then we take the inverse because it's identity function. The inverse is still the same identity function. Now, just as usual, when you perform simplex algorithm, the very first thing you do is you are looking at the row zero, right? So that's why we're going to look at the coefficient of non-basic variables in row zero. The reason is because for basic variables, the coefficient in row zero must be zero, right? 
Okay, so this is the formula to calculate the coefficient in row 0. And then first we calculate CBVB inverse. So this is uh, CBVB inverse. Our basic variables are S1, S2, S3. So the CBV is 0 because 0 is 1, 0 is 2, 0 is 3. Remember that CBV is the cost of the basic variable in the objective function in the original problem. Okay, So our CBV with respect to these basic variables are 0, 0, 0. And this is our B inverse from the previous slide. So we have our CBV B inverse, and now we need to calculate all the coefficients in row 0 for all non-basic variables. So our non-basic variables are x1, x2, x3. So we'll calculate uh, the coefficients for all these non-basic variables. And then we, as usual, we pick the one that is the most negative in a maximization case to become the entering variable. So in this case, we have selected x1 to be the entering variable. Same as before, we have determined that um, this is the most negative uh, coefficients, so x1 becomes the entering variable. Now we are going to calculate which one among this current basic variable should leave the basis. So we have the information that the current basic variables are S1, S2, S3, and these are our um, B inverse. So what we need to do is we need to do a ratio test, which is the right-hand side divided by the column of X1. So to calculate the column of X1, we use the formula of B inverse AJ. AJ is a uh, the column for x1 and then for the right hand side we use the formula of b inverse b so we know that this is the column for uh, x1 this is the column for right hand side so you see that we do not need to calculate the column for x2 and x3 because we do not need them right once you have these two columns x1 and right hand side then you may perform ratio tests as usual, right-hand side divided by the column of the entering variable. So 48 divided by 8, 20 divided by 4, 8 divided by 2. As usual, pick the smallest one, which means that S3 will leave the basis. Okay. Now, you don't actually need to draw this table. Here, I do this um, just to um, illustrate that what we do is just the same with the usual simplex, except that um, we just use this formula uh, only to compute what we need to know instead of calculating the entire table. Okay, So this table is optional. You may um, draw the table. You may not draw the table. If you're uh, okay with just the formula, then you can just calculate the formula. You don't need the table at all. Okay, to summarize what we've done so far, these are our basic variables and non-basic variables for iteration 0. And then we know that um, x1 enters the basis, s3 leaving the basis. So you're going to uh, exchange their positions. So becomes the basic variables becomes s1, s2, and x1. Now what we need to do next is we are going to update the B inverse. So B inverse here is the all the coefficients under the slack. So um, we are, what we are going to do to update the B inverse is that realize if um, this is the original uh, coefficients of our entering variable, in the next iteration, this column must become canonical form, which means that at the position of this leaving variable, it must become 1, and then all other uh, coefficients in all other position, they must be 0. So we perform elementary row operation to do this, and then automatically our B inverse will be updated accordingly. 
Okay, so we start with the fact that um, this is the original column for x1, and then we want it to be 0, 0, 1. 1 in the last position, because remember, according to the ratio test, S3 on the third row becomes the leaving variable. So as usual, the intersection between entering variable and the leaving variable, it becomes the pivot. So it must become 1 and the other becomes 0. So we perform elementary row operations to do this. So for example, the new row tree equals uh, 0.5 times the old row tree. And then the new row 2 equals the old row 2 minus 4 times the new row 3 and so on. Now do the same for the B inverse. So this is our original, uh, sorry, our B inverse in iteration 0. We perform exactly the same thing for the elementary row operation here and then we automatically get our new b inverse for iteration one so now you can imagine that we have got um, something like a new table here although i don't draw the table but what we know is that we have a new set of basic variables, bv1. We have also obtained the new b inverse, so b1 inverse. So we go back to our um, previous step as usual. We try to see is there any variable that should become the entering variable. Again, we calculate the coefficients of non-basic variables in row 0. So this is our cbv b inverse. And then for our non-basic variables, s3, x2, x3, we calculate the CBVB inverse aj minus cj. And then we see there is still a variable with the most negative coefficient. So in the maximization case, we have not reached the optimal solution. So now we are going to enter x3 into the basis. Now we have got x3 as the entering variable. Uh, same as before, we are going to perform ratio tests to find out who will leave the basis. So we need to um, calculate the column for x3, and here it is. And then we need to uh, calculate the column for the right hand side, and here it is. And then we perform the ratio test. So um, 16 divided by negative is none, 4 uh, divided by 0 0.5. This is the smallest one, so S2 becomes the leaving variable. And this position will be the pivot. So X3 enters, S2 leaves the variables. So this is the summary, X3 enters the basis, S2 leaves the basis, so you exchange the position, becomes like that, S1, X3, X1. Now we update the B inverse again um, using the fact that um, this is the column for X3, which is the entering variable, and then S2 leaves the variable is the position in the second constraint. So this should be the pivot. In other words, the new column for x3 in the next iteration should become 0, 1, 0. Again, we perform error and then um, do the same thing for our b inverse. This is our b inverse for the first iteration. Then apply this uh, elementary row operation steps to obtain the b inverse for the second iteration. Then we have got the new basic variables, we have got the new B inverse, we go back to determine is there any variable that should enter the basis. Same as before, uh, we calculate CBVB inverse and then for all the non-basic we calculate all the coefficients in row 0. So we see that there is no um, variable with negative coefficients. So up to um, this step, we have reached the optimal solution. 
and then the current basic variables they are optimal now to obtain the optimal solution again we are going just to use the formula b inverse times b remember to use the um, last b inverse so i believe this is b inverse 2 the second iteration this is small b from the original problems right hand side and then you get this is um, the optimal right hand side so the first one 24 means s1 equals 24 8 means x3 equals 8 and then uh, x1 equals 2 and this is the b inverse that we use like i said this is b inverse 2 here and then we may also calculate the z value or, or the objective function value using the formula of CB, cbv b inverse times b and same as before use this uh, b inverse after the second iteration when you calculate this cbv b inverse and then you get that the uh, optimal objective function value is 280. So in step zero, we initialize the problem with converting it to standard form and make sure we have the um, canonical basis such that for the step zero, our B inverse is identity matrix. And then the step one is um, we are going to start uh, calculating if there is any variable should become entering variable. So we compute CBVB inverse. And then in step two, we determine who enters the basis uh, by calculating all the coefficients for non-basic variable. And then if there is a negative non-basic variables, then that variable becomes the entering variable. And then in step three, we should um, do the ratio test to determine the leaving variable. So here it says, um, determine the row in which xk, xk is our entering variable, should enter the basis. This has the same meaning with um, which variable should leave the basis. So step one and step two is about entering variable. Step three is about ratio test and um, leaving variable and then finally in step four we need to perform error to um, obtain the new b inverse so these are the key for each steps so determine the entering variable leaving variable updating the b inverse and then start the new iteration again with the information of uh, the basic variables the new ones and then also the b inverse also the new B inverse okay keep repeating this and then you do not need to draw the table if you can imagine all this formula but I think it's also okay if you want to draw the table so that's the end for this uh, topic uh, for about uh, the revised simplex method and then in the next video I'm going to talk about to introduce a software that is uh, quite simple to use that you may uh, use to find the solution for linear programming problems. So see you on the next one. Thank you.